So Lucid just reported their Q3 earnings today, and there's some good news and some bad news. I mean, if you're just purely looking at it from the consumer side, the good news is, hey, production has ramped. I did a video a couple months ago that was talking about these sources claiming that production had been drastically increasing at their factory in Arizona, and that appears to be the case to me, with them building over three times as many vehicles as they built in Q2, and delivering about twice as many vehicles as they delivered in Q2. So the ramp is definitely improvement over the pretty weak numbers they had before and I'm very happy to hear them say that they expect to hit their newest guidance numbers which is 6,000 to 7,000 vehicles by the end of 2022 although they're definitely going to have to continue this doubling effect if they want to achieve that which considering how much they've grown production in the last quarter they probably will hit their guidance of 6,000 to 7,000 vehicles by the end of this year in terms of production but what's really interesting and the fact that they lost you know over 500 million dollars is kind of to be expected. I mean, the stock market is definitely reacting, in my opinion, very emotionally. It feels like a lot of shareholders these days don't understand that startups lose money and they're like, wait a second, you didn't turn a profit in the third quarter? Oh my god. But to me, that's not news. It's just kind of to be expected. But what really grasped my attention and the reason I wanted to talk about them for today's video is their order book actually declined, which is not something we're used to seeing in the EV space, particularly with all of these new startups startups usually coming up with really innovative and really compelling new options. In the last earnings call in Q2, they reported their backlog was around 37,000 vehicles. Now, after today, they said their backlog is a little over 34,000 vehicles. And they did deduct the deliveries of this quarter from Reservation Book, but they were only delivering around 1,400 vehicles in this quarter. And yet the order book declined by around 3,000 vehicles. So not only does that imply that there are people canceling orders and not going through with their deliveries, but it also means that there are not new Lucid orders coming in. Now, we can blame this on a lot of things. Of course, the recession definitely affects how much people are willing to spend on vehicles, but I don't know. I felt like the higher price market that Lucid was going after shouldn't have really been affected by the recession. You know, Tesla still has very long wait times on their premium vehicles that cost well over $100,000. And I know this is common for startups in the early days because there's transportation logistics and stuff, but the fact that for several quarters in a row now, they have consistently built a lot more vehicles than they've delivered is starting to be a tad concerning. Now, it's a pretty common thing in the EV world. You know, Tesla also built more vehicles than they delivered, but they said that's because they were shipping so many vehicles and so many were in transit now because they were exporting more vehicles from Giga Shanghai than they had ever exported before. Lucid is in very, very early stages, so I don't think they can fall back on the export experience use as much. And yes, Rivian has had these situations too, where early in the ramp up phase over the course of multiple quarters, you will see lots of vehicles built and not that many delivered. But even Rivian has reported, you know, pretty consistent rise in deliveries alongside that rise in production. Whereas here, it feels like Lucid is starting to build vehicles faster than they can sell them. And the 34,000 reservation number, I think is probably the scariest one because it points to the idea that a lot of people don't want to admit in the EV space that these vehicles do technically compete with each other. And because the Lucid is going into a demographic that is very saturated and very crowded with options, they may have lost a lot of their original reservations. And there's a ton of people going, yeah, I don't think I can go forward with this anymore. I don't think I can justify it. And Rivian is so far from that being an issue, right? Because they have like well over 90,000 reservations, not counting their Amazon delivery van contract. And there's lots of people driving them around. And what's amazing to me about Rivian is I know they're targeting a different demographic, but not for long, right? Lucid says they're going to have an event next week where they dive more into Project Gravity. That's a high-end SUV, like a big one. That's going to be going right up against the Rivian R1S. So it doesn't feel like these two companies overlap very much, but they both kind of are EV startups and they both started deliveries close to the same time. And yet Rivian is using larger battery packs than Lucid is. Rivian is using less efficient powertrains and has quite a few color options many trims to choose from with their interiors and they're ramping the van, the R1S all at the same time. And yet Rivian is ramping much, much faster than Lucid, despite having in-house design powertrains, more efficient designs, more aerodynamic, smaller battery packs. So because Lucid is insistent on having certain quality control and they claim that they have a lot of vehicles waiting in parking lots and waiting to be delivered because there's slight issues with them that they want to get corrected before they deliver to the customer to ensure the most premium 
premium luxury experience of electric vehicles. But if that's resulting in them losing money very quickly, and that's probably why there's a big sell-off going on right now, is because they have less than $4 billion in cash left, and they burned over half a billion dollars in the last three months. On top of that, they're also hiring more people, so as the production ramp continues, the operating expenses are likely not going down anytime soon. So, the revenue of delivering 1,400 vehicles brought in under $200 million, but they're going to need to bring in a lot more than that to actually stay afloat because their current cash pile can really only last them about a year at this rate. And most people are just able to see these numbers and see what it costs them to build these cars and realizing as you continue to ramp Lucid Air production, you're not going to be getting better profit margins because Lucid's announced this event next week, which is primarily about the Air Touring and the Air Pure, which in my opinion are probably sharing a lot of the expensive parts that go into manufacturing these cars, but they cost substantially less. Like the Air Pure is supposed to be like a $90,000 sedan and they're struggling to turn a profit with $150,000 sedan. So seeing the reservation list decline and seeing the revenue not really offset the operating costs of production ramping is I think why Lucid seems like they're in quite a bit of trouble. And I know that a lot of people like to think that electric vehicles don't compete with each other. They just compete with the global automotive market. But I personally still think the Lucid Air is a very compelling vehicle. It's very beautiful, very efficient, and is able to charge very quickly. I would still take the Lucid Air over any gas vehicle, no question, but the fact that there's people canceling orders and there's not new people coming in makes me wonder if part of the reason Lucid is struggling so much is because they're going after this luxury sedan market, which is just too freaking crowded. We already have the Tesla Model S, which is drastically outselling the Lucid Air, despite honestly not costing that much less in the first place, and many would argue the Tesla interior materials is like less luxurious, but still, they're like delivering over 10,000 of these things every quarter. And then you've also got Mercedes coming in with the EQS and the EQE, luxury electric vehicles that are targeting people who have more money to spend on energy efficiency and faster charging. You've also got the Porsche Taycan, which has become one of the best-selling Porsches in the world. And you've got Audi and BMW all kind of entering the same electric vehicle space. So going after this high-priced six-figure sedan market might be actually causing demand problems for Lucid, which I really didn't think they would have. I just thought everybody was going to have a backlog because everybody wants these things. But truly, I think Rivian doesn't have to worry about this because so many people are in the market for pickup trucks, particularly electric ones because of the operating costs of inefficient gas trucks. And of course, the SUV space is huge, very competitive, very popular. So they were wise to build out a truck in an SUV on a similar platform because they knew they would absolutely have no demand issues with either of those vehicles. Whereas Lucid is going after a market that's kind of already present with not that many advantages. The software from what we're seeing from reviewers is not better than a Tesla, nor is the charging network. The material choices on the inside are not better than a Mercedes. And maybe the Lucid Air Sapphire will save them for $250,000. But what really blows my mind above all is that Lucid has unveiled more trims and announced that we're going to make like a higher price vehicle that can go even faster than a Plaid Model S. And yet there's not new orders coming in. And their current order reservation book is in decline despite offering new trims and new options. To me, that makes them seem pretty desperate. Of course, they could liquidate more cash and maybe seek some more investments. But I know they have a lot of backing from the Saudis, but I feel like they have to not be stupid, right? They have to be aware that they shouldn't just keep pouring money into a company that doesn't know how to turn a profit and doesn't know how to make products that lots of people want to buy. So eventually that funding has to stop, right? I mean, that just makes sense in my head. But what do you guys think Lucid should do? I'm kind of interested to watch this event next week where they say that they're going to unveil their entire Lucid Air lineup. I thought they already did that. I'm not really sure what there is to unveil with the Air Touring and the Air Pure. It's like, okay, it's a body colored roof on a $90,000 car. Congratulations. Uh, I guess you get around 400 miles of range. Nice. And they also said that the reservation book for Project Gravity, which is their SUV, should open early next year. And they think that will increase their valuation because that means that more people are going to want that vehicle, hopefully more so than the Lucid Air. But it's probably going to be a very expensive vehicle, much more than the R1S. But again, the diminishing cash pile in the quick burn rate is probably the most concerning thing. I'm happy to know that more customers are getting their cars and that production is increasing. Lucid had a very hard time breaking the four-figure mark in the past few quarters, but they've done it. Now it's just a matter of cutting out 
the fat and hiring this many more employees is not a great way to go about that. So I apologize if you're pumped or excited for Lucid. I just have a hard time getting excited for them because I feel like the demographic they're going after is already served by so many markets. And I feel like their advantages between, you know, higher voltage architecture and higher range is not going to matter that much in the long run when most people are comfortable with lower range EVs that just have a decent charging network to pull from. Do you think Lucid has a chance? Do you think Lucid's going to get bought out? Are you excited for their event next week? And if you want me to cover it, please ask down below and I will. Thank you guys for watching and thank you to everyone on Patreon for supporting this channel directly. It seriously helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.